Good morning, it's Todd the Nerdy Gardener, and uh, I just want to give you a first update for this year. I kind of got away from doing videos last year, uh, but like always, I like to try to get back into them, do it a weekly update, usually on a Tuesday or Wednesday, because those are my off days from work, but we'll see how it goes. Let's start. This is the uh, lavender. Uh, it's about seven years old, I, th I think. I would have to go back and look. Uh, I don't know if I even could find out, but I'm guessing it's at least seven or eight years old now. Um, it's doing very well. Every year I try to make lavender lemonade from it. And uh, it kind of got pushed out of the way from the roses, the knockout roses, which are starting to leave out. But uh, they're coming back nice. I propagated these myself from cuttings from my in-laws. I planted uh, roses over there about 20 years ago. And then so about five five years or so ago, I took two pencil sides, cuttings, dipped them rooting hormone, and uh, I got two roses of my own from them, uh, which I was kind of proud of that I was able to accomplish. So that was that was good. That was fun. All right, so let's get on to actually the new growth this year, new new stuff here. Um, we'll start over here, so the, since it's the front yard's kind of slick, rained the past couple of days, but I have a bunch of um, lettuce here, Paris Island Cost Lettuce, I think it's called, which is in these cages to keep it protected from the squirrels. Um, there is, um, also there's some arugula here, um, Rocket, I think is the name, which is one of the, I guess the common ones I see it a lot. Uh, here's a partial here, I did not start myself, I got it from an Amish uh, nursery. Uh, me and my wife went on a little road trip uh, to Lancaster area. And we got some herbs uh, from them, which is the rosemary here, and there's a sage, which I will have to pot up. But I'm just leaving them in here to keep them protected for now, so they don't get dug up by the squirrels. They're very, very aggressive squirrels in the area that like to dig around here. Um, here's some more of the rocket and another lettuce. This one's, this lettuce, this pot's probably doing the best. That's pretty soon that's going to be outgrown the cage, but by that point they should be strong enough to leave out. Once they outgrow the cages that I can leave them out, I just, when they're young, being shallow rooted, and they get disturbed, you know, I just, I just worry that they'll die, so I'm leaving them protected, but can't wait till they outgrow them, because then I can use the cages for something else. Um, pansies, again, we got these from the Amish nursery, and uh, they're doing very well. Um, you know, I'm up here, I may as well stay with these, with this area. Uh, I can't really, it, the, the light is not the greatest here, but these peonies I dug up from a neighbor up the street who didn't really care about the garden, and I happened to be out there, and he said I could have whatever I want, so I dug up. Looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clumps. Um, they came up last year, um, which, but, uh, you know, as I was reading that, when you dig up transplanting uh, perennials like this uh, peonies that are not going to bloom probably right away for a couple years possibly they did one of them one or two of them did get buds but then they died out because i didn't keep up with the weeding or the mulching and they died kind of didn't do so great after after some point but they're coming up again and now that they came up in you know, in the area, they, didn't, they weren't growing, get dig up, you know, dug up and then replanted like they were last year. They overwintered here. They got, they, they were, got established last year, overwintered, and will be returning this year in their, their permanent home. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping maybe to get some blooms from this year. I, I don't know. It's only their first season in my garden, you know, after, you know, first spring coming up. Um, I also got these hyacinths from a neighbor. Um, I think there's what six here, but only four of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, only four of them actually bloomed, but two of them did not, for whatever reason. Um, aromatic asters I got from my brother uh, two, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago I think. Um, or maybe last year, I can't remember. Uh, I just get I get confused. But they're coming up a little nicer than they had been, so we'll, we'll see what happens with those as well. Black and blue salvias sprouting up, spreading very nicely. So they'll they'll overtake this area. They get pretty big. I'm a little worried that they're going to overtake the peonies. I'm hoping the peonies have bloomed by then. 
you know, I don't know. I may have to, to dig those up and, and rearrange them. I don't know. All right. Um, while I'm over here, I plan to do this a little differently, but here's a um, Brunswick. I think it's Brunswick. Brunswick cabbage. Um, I have more of these in the back I have in the ground, but I wanted to try um, having some in containers and also in the ground. Um, and this one's doing, this is, the ones in the and the pots are doing better. The ones in the ground, I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know. I'll show you that in a little bit. But this one is doing pretty nicely. Here's some more arugula rocket. Uh, catnip. This one's doing, I'm trying to get, make sure I get good sun here without blocking my shot. Oh, I should be doing this horizontal. <laughs> Um, here's that, green onions, more arugula, which is starting to get bigger, starting to grow out. Here's another cabbage. I'll pull him out into the sun a little bit, get him some sun. More lettuce, um, some dawn. I think it's Dawn Giant or Early Giant, something like that. Dawn Early Giant Leeks. Again, I have some of these in the ground, but I like to try to do, when I do things uh, a little more important um, to me, I try to do some in pots and in ground. Just to increase the ch likelihood of, of getting a good, you know, getting a success. All right, let's go down here. We can check out. This planter has some hostas in it that I got from my, my mother-in-law. These are nice cement little uh, planters. I don't think they have holes in a lot of them, but uh, for drainage. But we'll see what goes. They've, they've, as far as I know, those have been in there a while. So here's some more leaks with some anti-squirrel measures around them. I'll be taking those off soon in a couple weeks once they get somewhat established. Um, again, here's the anti-squirrel measures on my strawberries. Let's see if we can get a good angle. You can see the strawberries. This one's one of the better ones. It's leafing out a little bit more. But as you see, they're... Let me see. It's hard to get a good shot here with the sun. So that is, you can see they are starting to leaf out. I guess so from overhead. They're all... They're all doing well. We've had about four or five days worth of rain. <laughs> I have them all the way over. I have a little spot here that I can fit something in. Um, I got this mountain mint for my brother, but I don't really like it, so I'll probably try to pull this out and uh, arrange this corner um, a little bit differently, fix it up, and see if I can get a spot, because this is a pretty decent spot here that I can I can get some stuff. I just have to work at it. Um, daffodils that I got from an, again, neighbor doing very well. Um, they're just about on their way out, but I filled in nicely. I'll probably dig these up and try to thin them out a little bit, because there's quite a few here um, that didn't bloom, so we'll see what happens with those. More pansies and some lettuce that I was just going to throw in here to cover some of the area so the squirrels couldn't dig up the pansies, but it looks like some of it took, so there is lettuce in there as well. Alright, let's go to the backyard. All right. Backyard is not in sun yet. There is my nemesis. Go away. Go away. No, nothing for you. Nothing for you here, buddy. Nothing for you. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let's get my zoom back out here. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, I don't want to. I messed up my zoom. Sorry. There we go. All right. Um, green onions that I. These ones I planted last summer and then kind of forgot about. And I started them in here, kind of gave up on them. At the end of the season with the heat and the bugs and everything, I just get tired of gardening for the year and I kind of gave up, <laughs> forgot about them. 
they overwintered outside completely unprotected and they survived so i'm going to try to plant these as i have fine time these ones i started myself inside a few weeks you know a month or two ago whatever it was so i need to find time to plant some of those i already did plant some just quickly it was raining yesterday but i wanted to go outside and do some i gotta finish this out here as you see there's a little low spot there i gotta finish up this little little bed i put some in here's some more of the leeks i have two here it's gonna be nice once they get big enough i can take this these covers off but for now i gotta keep them because if they got dug up now they would probably die um here's some more I got two more here. I think there's 15 total. So we'll see what happens. There's a couple in there. There's more over here. And what else we got here? All right, more cabbage. Same variety, Brunswick. I think it's Brunswick. Brunswick, yeah. Which these ones are smaller. It's been cooler though, and uh, so I'm not really too concerned about those. But these ones, for some reason, I'm getting yellowish leaves and the, the color, you can see the color is pay, much paler back here. I don't know if I need nitrogen, I don't know if it's overwatering. I don't know if there's some contaminant in the soil. I, uh, I don't know what's going on with them, but I've had problems with this bed for a little while. It might be, and see, look, see, like these, there's two leaves, two leaves that are just, I don't know, just not doing great. But these are plants are bigger, so I'm thinking maybe if I just snap off those old leaves. And uh, but you can see kind of this one. See this one now? It's some slug damage, I guess. But it's starting to starting to fade a little bit. So I'm a little concerned about that. I may have to maybe you know I was thinking about maybe taking it in the soil tested here this summer. You know after the season or whatever. Yeah, after, because usually in the fall, I usually do like fall crop of like radishes or turnips or something in this spot. Or I've done daikon radish in here, which have done well. So I'll probably try that again before I do them, because I don't fertilize them. Maybe at the end of the season, I will um, do a soil test here. Nothing up. Um, this I right next to the cabbage, right along here, I have four potatoes. In there and in this corner are sunchokes which always do very well for me first time in this spot though uh, these three pots have potatoes a mix of Yukon gold or Kennebec um, again more anti squirrel measures nothing else in there though nothing popping up yet and is this this is also a potato bed here nothing in here yet this area is empty for now uh, this corner has peas in it, which I don't really see them coming up yet. They've been, they were shown about two weeks ago, um, but I don't see them coming up yet. I've never done peas, so I'm not a real expert. From what I read, what I've been told, start them before frost. Um, but I, I haven't seen them come up. I'm not sure what the watering is with them. Like, if you, you water and then it free, the ground freezes, how are you supposed to water? You know what I mean? <laughs> If the ground's frozen, like, do you not water them? I'm, let, I'm not really sure what the, the watering schedule is. Normally, spring, summer seeds, you know, I sow them, I water them morning, I water them at night, I water them morning, I water them at night, I keep the ground. Just like I was, you know, starting seeds inside, I would water. But crops like this where you plant before the last frost, what do you do? I'm not, I'm not really sure. What Do you still try to keep it wet? It gets to 28 degrees and you wake up in the ground as hard as a rock. You still supposed to water. <laughs> I don't know. That the whole concept just it kinda confuses me, but anyway. This corner here where it's mulched is more sunchokes. I'm not exactly sure where the sunchokes end. I don't know if it goes at the, up to that pole there or not. Or you know, I, I think roughly around there. And so I'm not sure in this area here where everything is. I'll just have to see when the sunchokes come up where the last sprout kind of is and uh i guess that's kind of it so that's uh that was oregano here i, I think i like said that mentioned that which i planted last year in the early spring planted it outside 
and uh, it's doing very well. It's coming back nicely. So I, I, I kind of got, never got around to harvesting it last year, so I had to trim it way back. A lot of dead wood, so I trimmed it way back. So I will be doing that. Um, once it gets big enough, then it'll be nice. The leeks I'm use with my sunchoke soup. All right, that's about it. Um, I should cut this one short. We're on the 15 minute mark now, almost 16. And uh, I'll come back next week. Weather's supposed to turn around the corner starting next week. So hopefully by then we'll have some potato sprouts to show you. And uh, all right. So that'll be it. Till next time.